Good evening and welcome everybody to the Monkey Bubble Euro Cup. It's the final day of the group stages and we have some excellent games to bring you here on this stream and on our other language streams. I am Omni Toaster and I am joined by Bemi. How are you doing? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to get into some Overwatch games. It's been a while, but we have some excellent yeah. ones lined up today. Oh my gosh, do we ever. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the one that we're about to see, which is Denmark versus Latvia. And that's going to be a humdinger of a match. That's going to be uh, having some of the some of the pristine teams of Denmark and the up and coming champions of of Latvia. Who, uh, you know, unfortunately, the record has not been too kind on Latvia. But I think, uh, to, you know, what I'm going to say it, Omni. It today might be the day. Uh, you never know with Overwatch. You, you just never know. Upset you never know, and. It's quite true, but they do have quite the, uh, the, the I guess, titan of, of a task ahead of them. Because, like, if you think about it, it's like you have, well, let's let's just go ahead and mention at least one of the names in Denmark. You have uh, Kallax, uh, which is not just. And Shax as well, two, two kind of big all-star players coming into that roster. It is definitely a, a monster of a team to beat for this tournament. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just waiting to see. Uh, there's not really much to report about. I'm excited to see what the, uh, what the results are going to be once we get into it. Uh, just to see if, uh, you know, maybe we'll be close. Maybe we'll get a game five or we'll get a three zero. It does depend on a bunch of other stuff, but we'll wait and see. I'm excited. Uh, do you have any predictions as to what maybe the score will be? Final total tally. <clears throat> if I'm gonna be, yeah, I want to see a. a... A game five, obviously, everybody wants to. They're the most interesting. Yeah. If I'm going to go for prediction, I am going to have to say three holo. Ooh. Okay. Uh, to ten. I, to ten. I, I, oh, okay. I see. I see. I'm going to say <laughs> three clear. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going to say three holo Latvia. Okay. I'm going to. I'm. I'm gonna... <laughs> I, Similar I, predictions. I, look. But also I, very different in a certain different way. Quite, quite. But, like, I, in, in all seriousness, though, that Denmark is a very strong team coming in. You have teams from Contenders and also OWL themselves. Uh, while I do think the synergy is slowly getting there and producing, it'll be interesting to see how they go up against other teams as well, just even outside of the European server uh, teams. We'll yeah. have to wait and see how this works out, because, like, sometimes, you never know, Latvia could potentially just have good synergy that day and maybe just take a couple of maps. I don't know. This is never an impossibility. Plus, on top of that, I think Latvia wins either way just because it's great experience for the players. You get to go oh, yeah, such 100%. pristine players. It's absolutely awesome. And I know that we're probably praising Denmark a lot, me specifically. But, uh, you know, these people are, you know, certainly have credits behind their name. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of, a lot of weight behind the coming into any kind of tournament, but the opportunity to play against them is, is something I definitely relish. Um, it's quite jealous of a lot of the players going into this game today. Yeah, going into this game today, it's it's going to be interesting. We are going to start on Oasis, it looks like, so that's going to be the first control map, and I'm interested to see this. We haven't seen Oasis a whole lot just due to the fact that the meta really doesn't complement uh, the map itself. But however, because like a lot of the times when you go into this... Uh, well, one, it was used to be a lot of goats before the roll lock happened with the 222. But also, on top of that, if you look at the map itself, it does have a lot of possibilities to go into a lot of dive compositions. And dive really hasn't been the meta, which is like the double shield, the uh, Sigma. However, it is possible to work it uh, in city center potentially, just to establish a base of operations and theoretically university as well. Gardens is where it starts getting interesting because there's so many wide open areas that you can get a lot more easily flanked than you can on city center or university you do have to make an effort to go a long way around those maps just to be able to get the flank when in gardens it's kind of like you know it's in the center it's in the middle point uh, a lot more so and it's both kind of it's actually very easy to flank around that if you just have a uh, easy way of uh, teleporting or just kind of going around um because it's not really in the center it's more off to the left so when i go into this i'm thinking like Maybe we'll see dive. It's a, it's a rare opportunity, but I it's mean, possible. And pharmacy is definitely a, a yeah. viable option and here. <clears throat> dive certainly isn't a dead composition. Just last week, in fact, we saw London running it in in the our play in tournament. So that's it's very true. Something that is viable can work as long as you do have that uh, coordination and that practice on it. It is 
it is a high risk strategy definitely less much more so than the when it was really prevalent in the meta one little mistake can can really see it going wrong i think uh i i agree with you i like your phrasing i think though just to kind of maybe reiterate it just a little bit i would say instead of maybe saying too high risk i think in the similar way of like triple tank triple support it's not something simply you just go ahead and play and it wins you yeah. have to have good coordination target prioritization and the execution comps have to be on point especially when you have dive because you're sacrificing a lot of that shielding and health to have mobility and damage so you need to make sure every shot counts yeah no that was one of the things that you know during the the, the triple tank triple support meta people assumed it was just a oh well, they're playing that comp so they've won and and it's definitely not that every comp in overwatch needs that kind of practice that that coordination yeah and here we are in university hope you brought back that book if not you are going to owe a lot of money and it's going to get dangerous so you might want to return that book before things get heated up in the library of university uh but either way i still think pharmacy might happen sometimes here long double range hit scan could also work flanking dps there's a lot of possibilities however also the arista sigma again viable option we do see it potentially being run over here i believe on the side of latvia as i'm or denmark thank you uh as kellex unfortunately does dc and that would be a good indicator as that is denmark uh not the dc but it is kelly <laughs> uh i should it should be clear it's not the Den denmark has fine ping i'm sure uh but either way i think denmark you know going to go for the safe and try and true option do i do see fisher potentially looking at the doomfist then again we can't assume anything before they enter out the gates but i mean doomfist works here really well like i said uh with university and uh kind of uh city center it is i should probably change my phrasing it is easy to flank but you do uh you do have a hard time not having the enemy team get information going like oh okay doomfist is coming around the back because yeah. it is just so easy to spot them when they're trying to go around <clears throat> yeah and with the introduction of sigma doomfist is very much kind of replacing the roadhog in that um that halt combo yeah you no know, you get the halt and you get the punch into the halt very hard to miss can get you a pretty instant pick. If we do stick on this Doomfist, I wouldn't be surprised to see Naga go over onto a Reaper as well. That is the the common pick at the moment for that DPS duo. Get That's the, true as well. In, the Reaper into the backline cause all sorts of disruption. Also to me as well, it's a very viable pick nowadays too. Just the Ice Wall to get the, um, no pun intended, isolation uh, going in. Just to, just to get the team out of the way and also just the low mobility of, you know, Arissa and also Sigma technically as well. They're not very fast tanks. They're just kind of uh, there to produce a lot of damage and a lot of stun with the boulder, yeah. the halt, and, and shield you as much as they can with through positioning. So <clears throat> certainly there's a lot of possibilities. With 10 seconds remaining, we're about to find out what these people are rolling. I do see this. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Just going to wait and see what Lafia does as well. Looks like they're just running the Arista Sigma. We are going to see a difference in DPS, however. It's, that's pretty much the only difference. Healers are roughly the same, just producing a lot of AoE healing. That's kind of a big deal now. And then on top of that, we're going to see the May and Doomfist difference. Who can stun the most? That's a big question. I mean, Reaper already going into Rayform, so he's going to be very vulnerable there. And Naga going to capitalize on that and take him down as soon as Fisher also finds a pick with that punch. So already Denmark in a really commanding position. There's Sigma, however, on the back foot, forced away. Fisher finds a second, and that is going to be that fight very quickly mopped up. All right, well, I mean, Fisher right off the bat, may able to find Mad Pie, and that just pretty much shut down everything very quickly. That May is supposed to send your team to disarray. So when you have no way to kind of distract team denmark they're just going to be going full w mouse one right there they have the reaper to produce the spam damage that they need yeah definitely coming in for a second one now sigma isolated off a little bit on the uh, back side the guys are going to be able to find latvia's sigma first keeping their tanks alive other than the Arisa, who is going to drop so that's a little bit of protection going for the team mark's dropping very low fisher looking for it going to punch him up find him as well the walls there isolating some of the team but oh, it's oh, not going to oh. be enough as the rock slams into that moira taking her down I actually physically felt that. That just actually hurt a lot in my in my own head. And uh, I'm, there's not a lot not a lot going up there, you know, Toaster. I'm just, like, already panicking. But, like, already off the bat, look at the alt economy as well. Just the amount of damage that they're laying their DPS thrive off of. Both of them almost have their ultimates. Well, Doomfist does have the Meteor Strike. 
you know, Reaper already has the Death Blossom. Things are ready to go here. They need to start producing pressure to force out these ults. Jump comes again, and the wrists are just too far forward. They're going to get taken down. The mate, no Cryo Freeze is available, so going to get out of that. Oh, no. Oh, this is just... You know, cry freeze or no cry freeze, that fight is over. That fight is over. They did use a lot of ultimates. Uh, well, let's see. They used Coalescence, Death Blossom. That's ah, not that bad, actually. Never mind. I I, I overstated. But, like, uh, definitely unfortunate. Also, uh, I think I just saw... I don't know if it was a cause. Oh, actually, oh, carry on. The flux is there. The gravity comes in, takes out one Naga into it. With the damage comes the punch as well. And they're just getting mopped up. The ult used Ooh. right in that game yeah no no respect no worries no cares in the world uh denmark looking very strong and you know uh they're rushing touch point they're in last team fight territory already off the bat they're about to lose their moira already yeah two down before they've even managed to get close to touching sigma just trying to disrupt that mate who is going to come in with a blizzard trying to freeze them up but going to die before they can even touch and it ticks down very dominant from denmark uh I honestly feel like a switch might have needed to be there. Like, Pharmacy would have been a really good answer to that, just to kind of say, hey, you have no hit scan, we're just going to shoot you from the sky and do spam damage. I think, honestly, even though, uh, you know, even though both technically had Reaper, I don't think Naga was focused enough on trying to break shield. That Reaper's kind of your biggest answer to just doing a lot of damage right away to break the shields. Like, Denmark was protected pretty much. Fisher had an opening every time. There was like a Sigma shield ready to go to allow them to drop the fist into uppercut and then retreat back. And they had a perfect cycle going on with their abilities. Really good synergy coming in from Denmark. I mean, just a little bit of a hero switch and addressing them right away will work out. Naga, however, choosing to go for that pharmacy. It's gardens, the high skybox. You know, obviously you want to go for that, you know, a little bit of damage and already get the barrage soon as well. Yeah, the Sigma shield quite nice against this hero though. But then does leave the rest of your team a little bit vulnerable. There's so much damage coming in. The nade is there. Just get that healing topped up. Get the team healthy as they come around the back as well. And the pick with the damage boost onto the Ana is going to be enough to give the team the confidence to surge forward into the rest of them and take the first pick, Ooh. the first capture. Yeah, already like Scalar just going DPS Moira right now. And look at this as well. Naga has been literally carried by Kellex right now just to get that barrage almost at 11% remaining. Looking pretty strong. They actually have it pretty much ready to go. They produced enough damage that they're set. So this is going to buy them a long time. I like marks on this McCree. They really need to make sure that they get the ult charge very soon, though. That dead eye can really shut down the pharmacy very, very quickly. So I want to see this target prioritization work with the composition that they have on Lapia. Yeah, looking to come in again. Shields just going down. Sigma's trading their shield health there for a little bit of damage on each team, but so far nothing. And then Fisher once again in with the Holt and the combo. And they're going to find the barrage load. They're not looking for it just yet. The Nana boost out onto the Arisa, keeping her healthy, but it's not enough. Oh. They don't get back out in time, and now they're going to start backing up. The Valkyrie was there, so a lot of healing, but it was a little bit too late as the team's just crumbling around it. Anna isolated on her own. It's just going to fall very quickly. Yeah, again, just uh, the damage being produced by Mad Pie is just not enough to break through the shields, and I'm not going to try to harp on the DPSs too much. It just seems like that seems to be a, a difficulty. And then also on top of that, uh, the team, you know, they, I haven't really actually seen any anti nades be dropped successfully by Diana. I would love to see that. The denying of, denial of healing would be so huge here, uh, and really force Sappy to, you know, uh, be able to go aggressive with potentially. Well, they're switching on over oh, the to. Punish comes Ooh. out. Ooh, nice healing there. Just not being able to pick that up as in comes the immortality field. Just as the ult comes down, but it gets absolutely destroyed, and in comes Mulpic on the Sigma with all the damage and the barrage is there as well from Naga. Very quick, smooth fight coming out from Denmark again. Super smooth, Omni. I honestly think, long story short, this is the last team fight territory. There's not much for me to say left here, except this is going to look brutal. Yeah, with the flux as well from the Sigma, they're barely even going to be able to get out of spawn. If I say barely, they're not going to be able to get out of spawn. There's going to be map one going the way of Denmark. Map one going in the way of Denmark uh, extremely convincingly. Like, there's nothing I can't say that Denmark did wrong per se they had their you know they had their reaper just absolutely go nuts here naga was so strong and be able to produce that damage and shielding and they were able to go in quite aggressively using the coalescence greatly the ultimates were just very smooth i think honestly you know latvia 
I think they have a lot of individual talent, but I think they really need to break those shields. Like, if you're going to have a Reaper, that Reaper's first job is to break shields so the rest of the team can produce damage with the Reaper, and then the Reaper's supposed to go in and then just go off. Yeah. I think that they're struggling very hard to deal with uh, both Fisher and Naga, just both finding exactly what they need. Naga on that Pharaoh was absolutely monstrous, building up ult in that first fight and then just raining down terror. Didn't even need to use that barrage that they built so quickly until near the end of the game, though, just to make yeah. sure that they mopped up that last fight. So they just, just the raw damage coming out from the Pharaoh with the Mercy, of course, was enough to, to get so much dominance in that game, even with the hit scan on the other side. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, just uh, I think there was a little bit too much commitment with the heroes. If you're going to, I think you might need to switch. I think maybe even if the fire is going to be that much of a problem, you kind of switch over to a dive and then maybe try to go from a creep pharmacy or just some kind of hit scan along with also a fire to duel with it just to ease off the pressure. Uh, and then, you know, there's just it's very situational because. It seems like they know what they want to go for, but they don't know what the list of the order is to go for which. You know, right. it's uh, it's like you're at the supermarket, you know what you need, but you didn't write a shopping list, so you don't know what, what which to get and where is everything. So, I think they just need to focus a little bit more, and I think they'll 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 do a lot better. We are going to move on to Havana. That is going to be their pick. Uh, interesting uh, call uh, as this kind of. Uh, does let the reaper kind of thrive here in these situations there's a lot of high grounds to kind of shadow step to so it just allows them to disengage from fights very easily yeah. and also be very easy to wraith out of as well however i'm sure they have a plan potentially they may want to try to run the may uh that could be an option that they want to do because ice holes are also pretty big there and you know may kind of is like an unsung hero in that map yeah, I mean, yeah, especially on the second point, that Maywall can be so disruptive. Yeah, that, absolutely. That that small kind of brewery area, there's so much that you can really isolate people uh, alone from their team and their get those early picks and shut down fights before you even actually have to take the fight, which can be so important, especially in those May comps. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that, it's just going to be uh, also difficult as well just to... You know, I I don't know. Just it's hard to avoid that pun. Isolate. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> it, it, it is a challenge. <laughs> just you just gotta you gotta go with it. You gotta own it. Yeah, just, you do have to you, own it. You got you gotta be proud of the fact that you're accidentally saying a pun every time you use that word. Just be cool about it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but all right. Oh, speaking of being cool. Yeah, I did. Guys, you see, I got you. There you go. Okay. I, you're picking up quick, Omni. We're going to work very well together. Uh, but <laughs> either way, speaking of working well together, Denmark are already having a pretty straightforward synergy comp. I'm not expecting it to stray away too much from what it was already, but Kellex switching on over to the uh, to the uh, to the Baptiste instead of running the kind of Moira for extra healing, they're going to run this. This allows them to be a little more aggressive, use that immortality field, and it's kind of like it's almost like uh, hidden in broad daylight a lot of the time. The immortality field gets lost in the f early fight when it gets really close to spawn, and things are going to get very interesting. So I want to see how they work this. No flanking DPSs, so not going not gonna to find a lot of results, but there could potentially be enough damage as well just to produce from long range. Yeah, Antinade already coming out, and so does yeah. our whole. Looks like they're going to back up into spawn, having seen what they're up against. Change some things up here, go for a I like this. and a Zarya instead of the tanks that they rocked out with originally. Try and take the fight to them a little bit more with those bubbles, with that hammer, get the damage through the shields. And then with a little bit of a speed boost from the Lucio as well, just to get in there nice and aggressively coming forward. The May will move just to get a little bit closer as they come through. Trying to get through the shields, but the anti nade is there straight on. And the Lucio and the Ryan just both go down to that. Really nicely played by Liana, by Scalar, shutting down that very aggressive push. Yeah, Scalar just pretty much the... The hero since the beginning of this fight, Curse Anti Nade forced them back just to try to switch over to Death Ball Comp. Now they're getting pressured, and the Anti Nade is just so huge. It's hard to avoid it because these entrances are so narrow in Havana. Coming again with a big halt, but not kind of find any picks up it. Again, a huge Anti Nade though. Oh, the lamp! It's going to be enough to get the Reinhardt down once again, get that big main shield tank. You can't run at a team without your Reinhardt. They're going to have to try and get out or die as quickly as they can here. Luckily, spawns quite close. 
spawn is relatively close, but you don't want the spawn to be close. You want that payload over to the other point at this point as well. Naga just also utilizing that ice wall beautifully. But look at this. Ultimates are pretty much ready to go. Scaler has the nan ready for the Doomfist to go off if they want to. There's just not a lot of things. There's just no room for respect right now for Latvia. They need to go in. They already lose the Lucio. Already. And then the Flux is there as well as it sounds down. It's going to get oh rid of so much of that tank's health. They're just at the spawn door, destroying them. They really need I mean, to switch over to the pharmacy. There's almost little to no answers to this. Yeah, you have Naga, but Naga already used their like dead eye so early, so now they have to build it back up again. So this is a you know golden opportunity to just run that. Coming in again, Fisher finding the pick he needs, finding a second as well, jumping in, dismantling the back line that Lucio and Reaper didn't stand a oh chance. Oh my gosh! Comes with the 4K for Fisher. Absolutely beautifully played. This is really concerning. There's also no. Well, all right. Like, let's let's chunk this up real quick. You have Earth Shatter, Blizzard, Grav, and Death Blossom coming up very very soon. I mean, they don't. They need marks to break the shield a lot just to find a good opening for the Earth Shatter. But Fisher coming in again. Has again. The to show that with the pull. Oh goodness <laughs> gracious! Oh. They're finally going to actually sure. be able to find something. Are they going to be able to capitalize on enough though? Naga and Henning like both getting kills. Two for the Arissa as they push forward again. Fisher found the one pick that he needed and it was enough. One minute remaining. Mad Pie switching on over to the Hanzo just to fight that Naga. Maybe do these Storm Arrows just to break the shields a little bit more. Storm Arrow does help that a lot. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, Marks could be the answer to this. Here comes another Flux, but there's also a grab as well. Oh! Is he able to find anything? Yes, while he's in the air, the Lucio goes down the grab. Not going to be able to find anything as they only have 40 seconds left after that very quick wipe. Wow, Denmark's a really good team, aren't they? So, with that being said, though, Mad Pie, switch you on over to... I don't think long range CPS is what you need. You need to switch over to a pharmacy address. It's good, Earth Shatter! It's coming, yeah. Earth Shatter comes down onto three, but there isn't any fall oh. damage onto them. Mad Pie, gonna be able to get a pick, though. They might finally be able to find something. No, the Shatter was there, but the damage was not as Fisher. Back into the back line, toying. Are you kidding? With that, Anna. Gonna mop up here. They're gonna oh still come out of spawn, but the punch is right there as well. The slam back, trying to stop the Tracer getting to the point. It's right there, so they are going to get to it, but they're just trickling on right now. And Fisher is just farming them up. Lucio and Ali are going to try and touch as they hold quite decisively, I'd say. <laughs> yep, that is a great adjective, I would say, <laughs> and I would agree with you. I think that would be the definition, I would say. So, with that being said, 6.28 meters pushed uh literally knocking on the door latvia could potentially present a lot of spam damage potentially you know breaking shields uh not necessarily even needing to go for flanking dps's at all just spam damage dps could be just fine like if they wanted to run a pharmacy because i'm expecting them not to like run a hits game right off the bat and if they yeah. could stay in the back line they could thrive get the baptiste rock again like they could pretty much give Denmark a taste of their own medicine if they want. We're going to have to wait and see what Lafia does, though. We, okay. We have, just, we have just seen that it's very possible to hold people in that door. because it, it is one of the more difficult spawns to actually get a push out of, you know, in the early days of Havana. That level of early hold was the thing to do. That was where you held, yeah. at least for the first little bit. The Mages tried to stop them getting any progress at all. Denmark showing that that is still possible. Lafia are going to have to come back out and show that they can do it, too. And to give a little credit to Latvia and just to kind of give put in perspective how hard it is to get out of that if the attack does decide to bully at spawn. I mean, if you look at Overwatch League, a lot of the time, sometimes a lot of the professional owl teams will also bully at spawn or very close yeah. to it. And you'll see a lot of full holds on Havana, like a lot of the time. So this is no different. Yeah, it was I, I spent a lot of time on this map before I even saw second or last point. But it was just just never did. So coming out, ball coming into the back line, but Madpie with the Torbjorn is going to get the first pick here. The bed's going to come out from Scaler on to the 
Junkrat, but Naga also going to drop. So they're finding something. They're finding a little bit of what they need. Getting the picks here and there, slowing it down. But in comes Fisher with that kill. The ball in the back line, looking for the Sigma. Henry's like going to find a turret. A little bit of damage coming down. Mark's also getting one, but here come Naga. Here come Fisher in the back line, getting everything they need. The Storm Arrow, the Concussion Mines, finding so many kills. Kellic going to pick himself one up as well with that Moira Orb, but they're just going to saunter run in to that 6.8 meters and go 2 nil up in the series. I mean, Zappy would use the uh, use, use the lamp very, very early uh, just to keep the Bastion alive and uh, that, like, that's the resource management was maybe not entirely there. Fisher also, yeah, was a big star player for this, just like a big old full hold. They had almost no stun. They had stun for a little bit where they had the McCree for a second. They had Mad Pie on also the, uh, not Mad Pie, excuse me, but oh, yeah, Mad Pie uh, on the, on the May, but uh, yeah, I I don't know what to say. It's it's difficult to come back from a hold like that, and uh, you know, Havana is a very difficult point to get out of a lot of the times if the team yeah. does not decide to establish on the high ground earlier on and kind of give the respect. You know, there's a level of self confidence that Denmark has, and it's with good reason as well because of the credibility of the players. Oh yeah, and, you know they just showed there that they can do that kind of. Uh, you know, aggressive hold and not be punished for it currently. Yeah, it seems in this game. So, what are you looking for from that year going into the next map to to get over that hump of of, of leaving spawn? I guess. Lavia, I'm really wanting to see switch heroes like they're doing, but in a way that helps address the situation. When they switched over to the Zarya Reinhardt, I was like, okay, this is a good idea. You can bubble the Reinhardt, get the charge on the Zarya, be able to produce more damage, and then also find the Earth Shatter as well to break shield. You drop that, you're able to find up, but then there was no follow-up. There didn't, there wasn't really any any thought after that, it felt like. You know, we saw the Earth Shatter come out, no way to follow it up. There was a Death Blossom that came way too late coming in from Latvia, but then, you know, they did drop it, but then they got stunned because everybody was just coming back from the Shatter. So I think there needs to be a little bit more time and execution uh just a little more quicker on the comms and then on top of that also uh i would like to see them when they switch heroes to go into it with a little more of a plan i would really love to see that yeah it definitely seems like potentially a pharaoh would have been a nice pick on that attack at least that they had at the start there they did put up more of right on defense you know finding the the early pick slowing down a little bit just let the dps into their back lines and then crumbled a little bit from there yeah, very true. It, it it's uh, it's very unfortunate that that's kind of the way it played out. But you kind of, as hard as it may be, sometimes you gotta just pick yourself up and dust yourself off and just go into the next map and going like, okay, not our map, fair enough. Yeah, and just uh, move on to it. So moving on to Temple of Anubis, uh, very much more straightforward of a map. Could do a lot of cool things with this. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see what they what what they decide to do on this map because at this point I don't know what they feel uh, DPS wise what they're confident in. It's going to be probably Arista Sigma. Could be Arista Hog that used to be that sometimes is a popular choice because there is a very simple high ground vantage points that you can work off of. Uh, but I have to I have to wait and see what happens here. So I'm very curious. Uh, yeah, I just gotta wait till till they come out of spawn, basically, on me. <laughs> yeah, and obviously two CP as well. One where the last point can be so rough to attack, just because the spawn advantage for the defenders that you can really put on a solid hold, even if you are getting run over a little bit, because you can bring out like the tracer, the May, the Lucio, get yeah. those here, the, the Hammond, get them in, just get them stalling as long as possible. Um, so we'll have to see. If it does get to that point on the defense, if Latvia can make that kind of big decisive stand on second and really give themselves a lot of time uh, reduced from Denmark's time back. Yeah, can they can can they can they raise hell? We'll see. Right now, off the start, Denmark gonna go ahead and rock the Arista Sigma once again and uh, you know just Hold on normal positionings, nothing too crazy. Got Fisher on the Junkrat. Junkrat is great on Temple Anubis because it's such a straightforward map 
that there's really no way to avoid those lobbing grenades. So you're just pretty much having to work on hoping that your shielding will be enough to avoid that spam damage. And Naga, oh man, this Widowmaker is probably going to be one of the most dangerous Widowmakers we've seen in the Euro Cup right now. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see this Widow. Oh! on this first point. <laughs> oh no. The Sigma slammed down by the opposing Sigma, Naga, with the body shot to finish him off. That was pretty brutal. It was pretty brutal. And it's so brutal that they've decided that they need a Symmetra teleporter. They they said, you know what? Let's just go straight to point A. And I think they're going to be a very aware of this on the side of Denmark. They're going to pretty much just try to build a ball and get ready. Already the Junkrat working very close to getting that Riptire, and that could be devastating very soon. Yeah, those are spam damage coming in, just trying to find something. They do go around that right side to the defenders, and they are very at mercy of the Junkrat, but less so of the Widowmaker. Oh my gosh. In fact, something is one of them gets triggered, the Arisa in the trap, but nice and safe with the rest of the team. Not going to be able to get anything in there. Scaler spamming in is actually going to be able to pick up Trust to Mix, so that is the Arisa, the main tank down. But look at this. On the back line at Marks, he's round, he's looking for something. They've teleported up, but now they're onto it, and Naga gets the better of the opposing Widowmaker with the headshot, but Marks gets his revenge. Just, just chucking some turrets up. No headshots on them. The vest is going to be there, though. So Kellex getting his Widowmaker back up, back in the fight, looking for more of those headshots. Slam down onto the Arisa. It's going to be enough to take him down as well. Lots of healing negated there. The Sigma isolated alone. The whole team on him. No chance for him as the rest of them are just going to back up and look for a, another fight. Tried desperately commit to that fight, even though they didn't have the Arisa for shielding. And honestly, this Arisa is a little bit of a concerning of a pick. Like, Arisa, yes, I know it's part of the meta right now with the Arisa Sigma, but I feel like on attack, it, it, if you're running into spam damage like this, it's going to be really difficult. Yes, you wanted most shielding, but switch to maybe a Reinhardt for more mobility, potentially, if you want to run the Arisa, uh, or if you want to run the Sigma at all. Because uh, right. at the moment, they're just getting picked, and they also need to... I don't know where they're trying to get this teleporter at, like, wh how they're trying to execute this. Yeah, so they've used the teleporter once when they managed to get in through the right, up over the top of the archway, but this time, the shielding not there enough just to keep them alive. The spam comes in as the shots from Naga is enough to take them down. Enough to take them down. Pretty much just, uh, all set. Really, with the ultimates as well, ready to go. Fisher has the rip tire. Nugget's going to be able to give that information over. I mean, if things get desperate, they have Kellex with the Valkyrie. And yeah, there's not a lot of ultimates coming online quite yet. Mark's maybe just trying to get that wall to make it easier. Here comes Rip Tire. Yeah, once again, the Sigma Shield, the only one there to try and get them through as they're in. They are all through the nice teleporter, teleporter, so they're going to be safe from that. But oh the my God. There as they leave, Naga with one shot, another headshot. Onto the Sigma to take him down two kills to start this fight off for Naga, and that's going to easily be enough to shut down the push again. Naga with three in the end. Hey, they got a tick. So, that's something. Uh, <laughs> wow. This is, uh, this is really a, a dangerous situation. They did drop a lot of ultimates, though. They only have the... They only have the Transcendence on the side of Team Deadmark. Latvia could potentially work off of this if they want to drop Marks as well, go straight to point, and try to take the fight there. That is potentially an opening for them, so there's still hope for Latvia. They did take a tick. Yeah, using the shield to stop some of the spam as they've been coming in has been absolutely destroying them, so it's going to be important, but they don't get enough shielding down with only the oh single one. Gosh. The bombs get underneath it, Marks gets taken out, no teleporter, no shield, and just no push. No push, and on top of that, they didn't let the tanks go in first. When you're going through the ta teleporter, you let your tanks go in first so you can drop that shield to protect them when they're going through the teleporter. But unfortunately, since they didn't do that, then they let the supports go in first. They just had such difficulty getting through that. So, I mean, good attempt for Lafayette. They managed to get a tick. Let's see. You know, so technically they can win this. They just have to defend that one tick. So let's see if they can do that. Uh... Tall order, but I've seen crazier things on me. It is a very, very tall order. The first points on on these maps uh, on the on two CP on control are usually um, sorry not control assault are usually fairly easy to get at least a tick on. Uh, you, you just kind of need to get the better in one fight, and uh, even if the respawns come in time, that one tick will fold to you. So it is going to be a ridiculously challenging uh, task here. Well, 
we'll just wait and see what they can do. What do they decide is the most important thing to go in with defense? And looks like they're still deciding. No, they're going to commit to this. This is going to be the Arista Sigma still. They're going to have TJ rock the Widowmaker, see what they can do. Pretty much getting a taste of their own medicine. But instead of rocking the Baptiste, they're going to be rocking the Ana. And they think that the anti-nade is going to do the trick here, just so that way when they produce the spam damage with marks on the junk rat, that they can pretty much just stomp them right away. And uh, that that could work out. I'm I'm interested to see this. They definitely are going to have to rush to the point because I think Denmark is just going to go straight for it. <clears throat> yeah, just looking to run in with that teleporter. Get Fisher set up somewhere in the back. Get that Bastion damage raining down. So they're coming forward with the shield. You don't see a whole lot of Reinhardt nowadays, so it's always fun when you do actually get to see one. Let's see if it works. There is a reason after all that you don't see a whole lot of him. Comes a teleporter from the right hand and they're all oh, on the point already. Oh, it's destroyed. Only the Reinhardt gets through. Isolated. He's probably going to drop. Fisher just going to sit up and try and find something back alone. The spam damage coming in from Marks. They are going to actually be able this to get out huge. as well. Hey, listen, he's going to finally go down. It took him so long. Gave the rest of the team a little bit of time to get up onto the high ground. And now the hammer gets a pick onto the Ana. A lot of healing isolated, but Naga also goes down. As does Fisher. Fisher drops as well. Kellex's immunity field is going to fall. So Fisher, just with the healing of the Baptiste there to try and keep him alive. Kellex is going to be the last there. Is also going to drop. And they are going to get that first little bit of hold going, but they're still in. Scale are going to finally fall. Henningsen, he's in just looking for something. He's actually going to be able to pick up the Arissa, dropping very low, as is the Sigma. Oh, Mark! 31, but Mark's on the back line. The savior of this hold is going to keep his team going. Naga going to get a pick at the end, but it's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough, but oh my gosh. That was uh, very close, but brilliantly done from Latvia, taking out the teleporter, getting the Reinhardt isolated, and since then it was so difficult. I hope they win these Whittle duels at some point as well. That would be really cool to see Ratija just be able to pop up, but it's not going to happen right now. Yeah, the hammer comes in, pops them up, knows exactly the trajectory there. They're just going to drop down with one body shot and a little bit of extra damage from the Hammond, and now they are in position with that Matrix. Oh, just doing so much damage into it as well. Hammond comes in. And this has got to be it, surely. There's so many dead. The charge down from Henningsen as well. It's going to catch that Mercy. They're going to get on. That is going to be one tick. And that is going to be game for Denmark. Really good attempt from Denmark. Uh, just overall, they knew exactly what they had to do. It's just basically, hey, guys, let's just dry push until we have ultimates. And then we can just absolutely destroy them. That's just kind of like the situation you have when you go into that. Uh, you when well, you only have to take a tick, you just kind of dry push until you get ultimates, and then you just go absolutely nuts. You saw matrix, you saw information, you saw landmines going in there, and uh, yeah, overall, really strong stuff from Denmark. Uh, Latvia tried their hardest, managed to get a tick. Really cool strats. I want to see, I want to see Latvia follow up on their ideas because they have good ideas genuinely, but it it feels like they they don't know how to follow up on it or execute it. And that's just my only biggest question. But in the long run, Latvia got a lot of cool experience. Yeah, and you know, take us all forward, work on that, and hopefully come back to Future Cups stronger, ready to put up a stronger fight, get further into each map, and maybe start taking those Ws that they wanted. Yeah, very true. But uh, I think that is going to be this series and then we do have another series coming up after this which i believe is going to be portugal versus south africa so yep. that's going to be very exciting but uh before we move on to that any 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 oh we do have one more oh it's a it's a first to four yeah we played right oh we played okay. four. Oh, that's right because okay cool all right so we're still we're still going to get more experience that's good that's good so we're going to see at least the the hybrid map coming into this now i guess the big question is what's the hybrid map maybe king's row i guess you just go for the straight yeah, up i like, mean it is vanilla the, choice it is the classic obviously but this is once again going to be lavia's choice i believe so see what they go for and it does look like we're going to be going on to king's row you are right yeah. if in doubt pick king's row yeah it really it is, is. It is a double-edged sword though between you know the is it's, it's probably the one you practice most but it's also quite likely to be the one that your opponent has practiced most just because it is such a main staple of, of so much of overwatch 
Yeah, but it's it's like it's nobody's best map just because like everybody's good in the map hypothetically. Yeah. Uh, you know, cuz like if you if it's like if you say King's Row is your best map, you're like it's like saying you're really good at riding a bike with training wheels. You know, you just kind of uh you just kind of have this uh you know, understanding of the map, everybody understands where to go around for the flanks, you know, if they, you know, what to do, you know, to go through the Alderworth Hotel just to go around and go through the back line just to get them by surprise or just head on a straight. Or if you really want to go for the Symmetra Teleporter Strat, you just go to top right the high ground. There's just so many options, uh, and a lot of heroes complement the style. Like you said, it is a double edged sword, and I actually agree with you on this because I feel like not so much experience of the map but understanding of how to utilize heroes best on this map is maybe better understood by denmark than lafia however lafia could pos potentially pop off here they had a really good junk rat i think i think marx is a good junk rat i think what they need to do is uh just maybe rock that uh potentially if they're not going to run into a pharmacy it could be really good so if they ne don't have to worry about too much about the high ground just focus on the spam damage and do damage with that they could uh, i think definitely the possibilities are endless like with with king's row i never like to assume what the hero it is it could be just the meta and just go for arista sigma or it could be something totally different like the tried and true combo of like uh grab dragon strike like the like the the old death ball days with like the the reinhardt zarya with the zarya complementing the hanzo like that sometimes shows up once in the blue moon i see it yeah. uh but we'll have to wait and see i'm excited to see this i do this is a slight hoping. Maybe Fisher will run the Doomfist again because it was really fun. It was, honestly, yeah. Not that bad. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, Doomfist is one of those heroes that <clears throat> I, I absolutely hate, but watching it is, <laughs> is, is very fun. I understand, especially if you're a Widowmaker main, you know, you get disrupted by the Doomfist, you know, potentially going... I mean, I'm an Ana main, so it's, oh, you're it's, an about, it, oh, it's about as mean. bad. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, at least you have the sleep dart, but you do have the sleep, and he can be pretty predictable in you know, where he's going. So it could yeah. be worse, you know. But you hear somebody charge off that fun. shot. Yeah. No. Of course, you're you're trying to be spatially aware of where to heal your teammates, not where to sleep the doom fist, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, honestly, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, it's like also doom fist is not bad on the map. Like it's it's pretty good if you know how to use them correctly. Just go in that back. Meteor Strike is pretty good. Just honestly, a lot of, um, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of AOE damage uh, here just kind of just thrives or just like good concentration of fire. So sometimes we do see that Moira a lot of the times just use the Coalescence and then just run over everybody, whether there's an Earth Shattered there or not, or where something to stop it. You just, there's just not a lot of places to run away from the Coalescence. Yeah, it's a very, especially the streets phase and the final phase, just very enclosed areas of the map. So, to see what they go for as we are now into the map so we'll be bringing you the heroes very shortly as the teams just deliberate decide what they're going to be going for best guess is just arrest the sigma and then uh kind of go from there with like lucio moira uh reaper may just very straightforward things oh i still see the doom fist okay right. and i see the death ball with the reinhardt zarya so we'll see what Naga goes for. No, all right, they're they're debating my hopes. They're de they're going back and forth on what they want to do here. They're thinking about fun here, I think, because uh, you don't usually go for the Roadhog when you have the Reinhardt. No. Uh, but <laughs> sure. So it looks like I think we can be pretty. Oh no, he swapped off the Doomfist as well, so that might be somewhat disappointing if that's the comp that we end up that's sticking with for them for. It's not the end of the world, but you, know, you love to see when you ask for a hero and they bring you that hero. It's always fun. Melo on this first point, very strong, just walling off either of those choke points, you know, at the fountain or just at the gate. The fountain forces them all the way around to the other side. Can be pretty bad. Waste a lot of time as they start coming in now, so they do get through. Doesn't quite get the Maywall there. Just gonna use it to get her team around safely. See so now being attacked from inside the hotel lobby. Looking for something, but aren't gonna find any way out just yet. Marx also has that wall available once again, so might be able to find something. Pushing in around the back, but here comes the Roadhog, trying to find a hook, doesn't find it. The stun comes forward, but Henningsen finds the first kill. Helix follows it up with another, and a huge anti-nade as well. Onto yeah. two, the Lucio and the, the Orisa is going to get dropped down by that. Orisa gets bolted back in, and they're going to have to retreat as quickly as they can. Really admired Latvia's attempt 
at what they were trying to do here. Oh my gosh, are they actually going to stagger the Sigma? Okay, oh, well, no. oh, that's unfortunate. That's a really bad situation to be in. They're just going to let Sigma hang out there. But yeah, they, they were prepared for them to go through Olderworth Hotel, and that... Kellex is on anti nade. It's pretty much all you have to say about that, Omni. Yeah, that was a brilliant nade off the after the first few picks. And once again, straight away, Naga's going to find the first kill, followed up by one from Cappy, uh, Zappy. But it's, it's only going to be the one for Latvia as the rest of them fall very quickly. Very quickly, but they, you know what? They also f get very quickly ultimates. Look at that. Alt economy coming online does have a lot of ultimates to go through. Fisher does have. You know, Blizzard, there's also the whole hog, there's a lot of things to go through, but the cold lessons could be something that they have, and the sound barrier is almost around the corner. So they have a lot of support ults to answer aggressively and also defensively. Oh! Lovely whole hook. Just as the shield went down, there was the ice block there, so to keep themselves up a little bit as the Blizzard comes in, they run back through it, trying to find something, and they're gonna die on the way back out. Zappy also falls. Kellex goes down again, so one kill coming out for Latvia in response to the many, many kills from Denmark. Yeah, it's, it, it really does feel like, you know, for every one kill from Latvia, Denmark answers with the entire team. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here as they do have a lot of ultimates again going to be coming online. They did get Fisher to drop the Blizzard, but the Molten Core is available. So I don't know what they want to do at the moment. Yeah, coming in again. Naga just seeking out, looking for something. Gonna go for the Molten Core in the back line, try and find some damage with it. Isn't gonna find anything, actually, though. So now the kills start pouring in. Charles Mix finding two. The Reaper finding one before going down to Naga on that back line. But they're in, and they have numbers advantages right now. As the turret also drops, a little bit of damage going down. Alex, he's off on his own at the top. Gonna be joined finally as the Sigma gets frozen up. But it looks like they finally have a commanding position on this point. But the nice is barrier. The anti nade barrier there just to keep people safe people from um, retreating as they now start to come back on but the kills are still going in really nice stagger coming out just keeping the point control a little bit in their favor here for denmark just the hammer there trying to find something heading Zen with the shield keeping him just just on it. point but they finally get the point they flip it and they move on to second naga trying to find something dice run. Really interesting attempt for Naga to try the Molten Core and the flanking in the back, but it was so late that the Coalescence was dropped, and then everybody was pretty much far beyond where the lava was, so really didn't get much value at that all, and turned it into a 5v6 for Denmark, and that is, unfortunately, you don't really want to do that. It's kind of like when your Sabra hangs out in the back for too long, waiting to get that initial hack. It's just not going to be ideal, because then you just leave your team alone. Uh, with the player disadvantage so really good stuff from lapia they only have two and a half minutes to push through streets phase though and that can be a nightmare in and of itself but they're already producing a lot of damage and they have a death blossom ready you can push forward really nice wall isolating a lot of the team there the immortality field is there just to keep them up while they're in that wall but then the, as soon as it's dead the death blossom comes forward finding a lot of damage but no kills as scaler responds with an ult of his own keeping his team all up and healthy fisher in the back looking for something with the tracer I mean, along with the headshot, some scale is going to be able to find the first pick of this fight. Finally, on the trust mix with the uh, the Arisa going down, they have a lot of support and uh, protection missing. They're going to get routed, start trying to back up, but killed as they do. Yeah, they, they go down one by one, but they managed to stay alive for a little bit of, of the fight to get some all charge. And there's not a lot of ultimates on the side of Denmark at the moment, so Latvia still technically has this alt advantage cycle going for them. And it was really smart to disengage and hold on to those ultimates. The flux could happen very well for Sigma, and that could be a great opening for them. However, Fisher, I really like this tracer because it gives them a lot of things to bother. Oh! Oh, the bomb with oh the Oh my hole. gosh. Oh Doesn't god, that was so scary. It finds the damage, not the kills, and the follow-up is there to take down the Arisa as well, which is enough to stop this push, and with another halt, they're probably going to be able to get more picks off of the back of this, just looking for something. The Matrix is also there, trying to get a bit of extra damage onto them, just to get as much out of this, and as slow as possible as well. This has been a decisive wipe, but a slow one, and it's going to really stagger some of those respawns. It does. It really does stagger a lot of those respawns, and, uh, you know, the the gap between alt advantage for Latvia and Denmark is slowly closing right now, Omni, as they just have so many ultimates coming that are already online. Pulse Mom almost ready for Fisher again as well. Good halt. 
Yeah, coming forward, the Holt is there, trying to find something, the Blizzard follows it up as well. It's onto a lot of them, but Scaler, once again, has the ult ready. Isn't it enough to save Fisher? He drops it to the Sigma, and then comes the opposing Death Blossom, and finding the Reaper. Getting the better of the other half there, Naga getting two as well, off the back of his Death Blossom, picking up one just with his guns. And now in comes the push once again, just into the dregs of Latvia, as they try and get out or die. Lavia is just having so much difficulty with these shields. The shield placement coming in from Denmark is so strong. Again, it's it's kind of the situation from map one. Tija just doesn't have uh, the spam damage enough to do it to get the damage on the shields. Yeah, and the stick out onto Tija as well. Nicely done from Chris. We're going to shut him down before this fight even begins. And now into overtime, they're going to get mopped up. And the cart is going to get stopped does get stopped they tried to push it as far as they could they did the best as well they did manage to get a point looked really strong i think i want to go back to how lafia won that fight because it did stagger on a little bit and it could have been a dire situation where they didn't actually get that uh point altogether so i think what i really would love to see coming in right now is uh a little a little more how do you say this patience and coordination uh just like understanding that the targets will be there you don't need to go for everything that you see right away just focus with your team if they coordinate a little bit more they'll be fine uh because you really did see them focusing together as a team like you could clearly see the way that they were target prioritizing that the shot calls were there so really good team fight from lafia when they went on to point a because that was such a great fight they had sound barriers to keep them alive the ults were staggered uh, enough that they had a good cycle of ultimates going for them, and they had ult advantage for a good long while. Lafia looked like they could potentially actually have taken this map, and they still have a good chance as well. Not a lot of room to work with, but at least they have a whole entire point, which is great. Switching on over to the defense now as well, just real quick. They do have the mate going in. The ice walls could be great for marks, and I do like TJ on this Hanzo. Storm is pretty good. I don't know if the tanks necessarily will complement entirely the the Hanzo because there might not be a lot of utilization with the Dragon Strike except for zoning. But overall, I like this a lot. I just hope that they can get around the shield situation, which seems to be the case because look at Denmark. They're running the dive of the Wrecking Ball. Yeah, so they're going to be just going in very quickly, very aggressively onto that backline, try and pick out those key targets. The wall comes out as the Tracer. And the Hammond come in, but it's not going to actually really hinder them as they actually start taking a lot of damage. Morphic is going down onto the low ground. Back round to the health kit as the rest of his team have now come in on to point as he disrupts that high ground. Just trying to split up the attention of Latvia. Looking around, around the corner, back onto the back line. Naga, he finds the first pick onto the Mercy. That's a lot of healing denied as the anti-nade also comes out. So that's even more healing, just not there for the team. Sigma dropping very low, Naga gonna pick him up with the Tracer with the melee who finish off after Marks getting a very nice headshot out onto Naga. Shut down that, but the damage is still there. There's very little healing available for Latvia. They're struggling to stay alive on this point, but with the Matrix, they're finally gonna have something that they can push back with. Oh. Damage, looking for a heal as Fisher. And the backline, but the wall is there onto him. Is it gonna be enough to finish him off as he's in the corner? Yes, it is isolating him. The anti-heal out onto the other side isn't going to be enough to do anything there either so they finally start to maybe stabilize on Latvia as I say that though TJ goes down to the dive from Henningsen now he's on the back line looking for more gonna jump out get himself back to safety just oh, a little bit oh, oh. another anti-nade comes in Kelex trying to stop that Lucio but Mofig in with the huge ultimate taken down two Naga following it up with one from his own as well and that is just, that is open first right up for Denmark to take Really good stuff, too. Uh, I mean, Lavia just was very coordinated for the most part, but unfortunately just not going to be able to find results. They do have a lot of ultimates coming online, but there's so much pressure coming in. They're already taking this fight to them on the side of Denmark. It just looks so strong. I do want to see how they use this ultimate. Nano Blade is pretty much ready, and that could be just the cherry on top of this Omni. Yeah, the dive comes in again from Henningsing onto the back line. The cart finally starts to leave its garage, so... Gonna be making progress there. In comes the Primal Rage, looking for something. Actually, he might just be looking to get out, make sure he can do that nice and safely with that extra Fair jump, enough. with the health. Gets back to his team, gets ready to set back up for a, another dive, another attack. Naga already ready in the back. Line. 
Oh, Sand Barry is there, and the Nano Boost onto the blade coming forward, gonna find two straight away Fisher with the double, the triple as well as he dashes forward again, Naga follows up with a little bit of damage on his own, it's gonna be a very, very quick team kill with that ult combination. Very quick team kill indeed, and now, I don't know what they can contest with, they have no ultimates, this is looking pretty bad right now, Denmark looking like they're about to close out this series 4-0 altogether, and yeah, they're coming to this payload very quickly, and Zappy can't even touch, yep. Nobody can touch. This is pretty much GG's, and that's it. Yeah, but pushed forward, and they have it 4 0 to Denmark in pretty decisive fashion, showing every comp that they could play really there. They had the dive, they had the Arisas, they had even the Reinhardts with the Symmetras, showing off a whole range of heroes and looking very convincing on all of them. Yeah, really good flexible, and very interesting to see the dive coming in there, but. It, it really did address a lot of the problems, which was uh, sometimes Lafayette had difficulty just going through the back line of of just or like getting flanked so easily by by the opposing team that it was kind of very unnecessarily difficult. Uh, overall, though, Lafayette did try their best, and, and you know I I do commend them. They won a couple of fights, and and they looked clean in most of the parts. I think when they honestly had some clear, concise shot calling. Uh, and there was moments where they had good target prioritization. They looked like a genuinely good team that could put up a good fight. They just needed a little more consistency in that field. So overall, I would say very, very unexpected. Denmark winning this very convincingly. However, Lafayette did try their best, and I do give them an A for effort, most definitely. Yeah, and for those of you watching, thank you very much. Don't forget that you can buy merch for all of these teams, and it does go towards helping them and their Overwatch project there so that is if you type estimation store in the chat you can find out more about that and where to do it you can also donate and you can do it towards your favorite team so if you are a denmark or latvia fan watching that current game make sure to show some love for them hit us up with a exclamation mark donate and you can see where to go and do that for now we're going to throw it to a quick break we'll be back for another game later we have south africa versus portugal cool. be coming up later it's an important one as well. It is deciding, in fact, who goes through and who stays in the group stage and doesn't progress. So a very exciting game coming up later. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.